Thanks to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. For more information, check the affiliate link in the description. You could argue that glitch effects are overdone at this point, but you can't deny the fact that they are super amazing. After gathering some reference images in Pure Rep for inspiration, I then try to give it my own twist by using random greeble textures to generate these circuit lights, which would also serve as a displacement map for the glitch effect. Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. Quick heads up before we get started, not everything that was used in this project is built into After Effects, but everything is 100% free. It's just that you're gonna have to install certain things if you don't already have them. And those certain things are the Jace Placement Program, which is standalone, the Displacer Pro plugin, and the Color Vibrance plugin, which you must copy over to the plugins folder of After Effects. I could have used built-in tools to roughly get the same results, but I always try to come up with excuses to share useful tools, especially if they are free, because they always make your life easier. I will make sure to leave links to everything you need in the description along with the project files, which are going to be provided on my Gumroad page. As of now, all project files are using the pay what you want system, so you can grab anything you want for free while still having the option to support the channel if you'd like to. Also, if you don't want to miss out on upcoming videos, then make sure to hit subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started. I recently found this really cool and free program called Jace Placement, which allows you to generate random textures in 8K resolution. It currently has five presets to choose from, and each preset has additional settings. I use the Jace Placement 2 preset with a crap pack sprites, which gives us this greeble texture. I left the sprite scaling at default and didn't touch the background brightness because I wanted the values to be as flat as possible so I could then control the contrast in After Effects. But I did crank up the iterations to maximum in order to get as much detail as possible. Once I had my texture ready, I could then decide if I wanted to use the colorize feature, which I didn't because I knew I was going to colorize everything in After Effects. You can even invert the texture, save the height and normal map, which would be very useful if you plan on using this as a displacement map to extrude 3D objects, for example, but I only needed the height map in this case. I also used the wire preset to generate these lines, left the wire color and width mode to linear for a consistent look, and set the direction to cardinal, which gives us horizontal and vertical lines. Even though some near vertical, you didn't all yet. I knew I was going to use the auto trace feature in After Effects to extract masks from this wire texture, so I made sure to set the layer count to the lowest point, which is two, and then increase the wires per layer to 25, so the luminance values of each line are the same. This way, the auto trace feature will have a much easier time tracing the lines. I then brought the textures back in After Effects, put the greeble texture inside its own comp, and set the resolution to 4K, because even though I knew we were going to get real close to the texture with our camera to get those macro shots, 8K was still a bit overkill. Remember, we also have to keep in mind render times. Before I did anything else, I made sure to switch to 32 bits per channel, because I knew that later on I was gonna add glow effects, so in that case, we need all the data we can get. Now, it was time to start animating. I brought the Greeble Texture Comp into a new comp, duplicated it and added the Vegas effect to this duplicated copy. The Vegas effect is a pretty sweet effect that generates stroke lines based on a mask path or on a specific channel of your image contours. I created a black solid sitting on top of the original Greeble texture and set it to 50% opacity so the Vegas lines were a bit more visible. You can tweak the threshold amount to determine the amount of lines. I set the segments to 16 with the length at 0.5 to get dashed lines for extra detail. You could also set the segments down to one if you want a continuous, uninterrupted line. Do keep in mind that the more segments you have, the longer it's gonna take to render. The rotation value gives movement to the stroke lines, but instead of animating it manually, I use the time times expression to give it a constant evolution of 100 degrees per second. As for the rendering, I set the blend mode to transparent so the original texture would go away, and we're only left with the strokes, colored white, and with the width set to four. I also modified the other opacity settings until I got something I was happy with. I then duplicated the Vegas layer, 
On this duplicated copy, I first set the segments down to 1, randomized the seed, made the lines less thick, and finally added the CC starburst effect, which generates sphere particles based on the layer's pixels. They do animate though, so I set the scatter and speed down to 0, and then modified the grid spacing to determine the amount of dots across each stroke. That, together with a size value, will determine the amount of particles and their size. And now, our circuit has received a light upgrade. I then duplicated the starburst layer, set the grade spacing to 20 so we would get some bigger dots, and also changed the random seed. It's all about adding many subtle layers with different settings, which all add up to give the impression of high random detail, when in fact, if you look closely, it's all gibberish. Speaking of adding detail, I used the fractal noise effect on a different layer with the noise type set to block and the complexity down to one, so we get this flat layer of squares, which look like a circuit grid. I then tweaked the scale to roughly match the overall size of the strokes and finally set the layer's blending mode to soft light with 10% opacity. At this point, I was pretty happy with the Greeble texture animation, so I decided to focus on the title. I went on to search for a futuristic sci-fi font and found this really cool one called Contrax. I then created the title by using that font, adjusted the size and tracking, and then pre-composed it, as always, so we can go back whenever we want, edit the text, and it automatically updates across our entire project. Oh, and I also made sure to set the resolution of this title comp to 4K as well, because of the close-up shots. I then dragged the title comp into a new comp called Title Texture, which is where I would combine the title with the Greeble Texture animation. At first, I duplicated the title, set the original copy to Stencil Alpha, so anything underneath this layer would be isolated based on the alpha channel. As for the second copy, I used the Vegas effect again, this time to generate stroke lines around the title contours. I set the segments to 3 with a constant rotation evolution of 50 degrees per second, and finally set the width to 4. At this point, the title was looking fine, but it lacked a bit of extra detail. This is where the wire texture comes in. I could have used the Vegas effect for this as well, but seeing as I wanted these to be static lines, then I opted to use the auto trace feature to generate masks based on the luminance channel of the image, copied those mask paths over to a solid, positioned them so they would cover the entire title, and added the stroke effect. I made sure to check the all masks option, adjusted the brush size, set the spacing down to 0%, and the paint style to on transparent. For some more detail, I duplicated the solid, increase the brush size a bit, set the spacing to 100% to get a dotted line, and set the brush hardness to 0% so the dots would be less pronounced. I even animated the end value to have both the lines and dots draw in. I now had all of my elements ready, so it was time to put them together. In the main composite comp, shall we call it, I first created a new solid which would serve as a background with just a bit of brightness so it's not completely black. I imported the Greeble texture animation, duplicated it, and offset the rotation for some randomness. On the first copy, I added the curves effect to dial in the contrast, so we would mainly see the bright parts. On the second copy, I added the set channels effect to determine the visibility based on the luminance channel. Set them both to screen mode with the second copy at 3% opacity, so it's really subtle. I then imported the title, and to make sure it was readable, I created a mask on the first Greeble texture and set it to subtract. I then duplicated the title and added the find edges effect, which does exactly as it says, it just finds edges and creates lines. I inverted it and set its blending mode to screen. Then I imported the original title comp, so the one without any textures, and copied the Vegas effect from the outline copy back in the title texture comp and added it to this. But I did tone down the width so it wouldn't attract as much attention. Set its blending mode to screen as well and then altered the scale a bit for some extra interest. I then created a new solid to which I added the grid effect, set it to width slider mode, adjusted the width and border values, and set the color to black. Seeing as the grid layer was on top of the Greeble texture layers, then the circuit lights would be cut off along the grid lines. This is also why I set the background color to slightly brighter than pure black, so we would notice the black lines of the grid. If the background is also pure black, then the grid wouldn't be noticeable. And now finally we get to the glitching part which apparently is the main theme of this project. As I mentioned at the beginning, I used the Displacer Pro effect, which is basically the displacement map effect on steroids. So I added it to the first copy of my title 
and set the map layer to the Greeble texture based on the luminance channel. Now I could increase the translate X and Y to distort the tile. I didn't use the rotation feature, but you may notice that as I increase it, the title sort of glitches in a weird way, so if you want a spiral glitch, then just make sure to set the anchor X and Y to 50%, so it distorts from the center. You can also adjust the map settings, and to see exactly what's going on, you can set the view to map and see the changes as you make them. I did set the map gamma to 3, so it wouldn't glitch out the entire title, which was useful for better readability. I also added the Displacer Pro effect to the Find Edges title. Before moving on with the animation, I decided to do some sound design for a roughly 10 second intro so I could match the camera movement and the glitch effects to the beats of the audio. For the music and sound effects, I used Envato Elements, which again is the sponsor of this video. After I found everything that I needed, I then combined all of them into their own comp to get a single cohesive sound and added the reverb effect for some echo. I turned everything into 3D, rotated them to lay flat, and then created a two-node camera with a long focal length and orbited the camera around until I was happy with the composition. I also turned on the depth of field with a very high aperture, which helped a lot with creating depth. By the way, you can choose between different iris shapes, which I personally set to decagon and the iris roundness to 100% so the bokeh would be smooth. But you could also set it to triangle for example, which gives off this very stylized look. You could also set the aspect ratio, which I did, to say 0.5 for a sort of anamorphic look and even boost the highlight gain, which retains the highlight's brightness. I then animated the camera position and focus distance to have it dolly in as the focus slowly shifts to the title. I also animated the Displacer Pro on the titles so they match the audio and even added the turbulent displace effect on the title outline layer with the displacement type set to horizontal, a minimum size, fluctuated the amount to match the individual beats and finally added some constant evolution by again using the time times expression. For some more energy, I used the wiggle expression on the point of interest of the camera just to give it some handheld movement which makes the shot more dynamic. It's very subtle, but you could turn it off if you want to. Once the last shot was done, I then started to create some detailed shots which would serve as sort of teaser shots before the title reveal. I thought because we have this grid design, it made sense to have strict camera angles to match the horizontal and vertical theme we had established. Even though some near vertical, you're in Italian. So I kept duplicating cameras to get multiple detailed shots. The first ended up being the shot of the camera rising up and revealing the grid. Then we get to see parts of the title in very tight angles as camera 2 is moving vertically to flow with the movement of camera 1. Camera 3 is then moving horizontally and gains speed right as it cuts to the fourth camera, all the while animating the Displacer Pro in specific areas to match the glitch with the audio. By the way, to add secondary motion to the third camera, I used a 3D null object which I parented the camera to and animated its position. At first, the fourth and fifth camera were basically one camera and I was animating the zoom value to have it zoom out midway, but seeing as during the first part, the camera would land on these empty spaces, what I did was to split the camera at the point of the cut and then reposition the first half of the movement to a spot that was more dense. To help transition between the last two cameras, I used the camera lens blur effect to blur the entire shot just before it cuts away to the last shot. I actually used the camera lens blur effect across all shots prior to the last one because it was getting very tedious to control the depth of field due to the camera being very close to the subjects. So I created a blur map by using a gradient overlay layer style on a solid with the reflected style, pre-composed it, tweaked the contrast a bit and used that as a blur map on the camera lens blur effect to blur the top and bottom parts. Now, because we had set this rule of having either horizontal or vertical camera angles, I had to also modify the angle of the last camera. The original camera was also pretty cool, so it's available in case you wanna use it. What can you do? Sometimes you have to make some sacrifices for the sake of the final product being as good as possible. The Greeble mask that isolates the title for better readability is present during the last shot, but during the other shots it's gone because I wanted to have as much detail as possible in those close-up shots. I even turned down the map gamma right at the end so the entire title would glitch out. By the way, keep this in mind, you can use this entire intro as a whole, which you can edit freely however you want, 
play with the timing of the keyframes and whatnot, maybe even change the audio as well. Or you could also use just the last shot as a standalone intro, which you can render by setting the in and out point of your comp and then selecting one of the two available camera angles or even creating your own camera. At this point, every detail was pretty much in place, so it was just a matter of beautifying it. I first created an adjustment layer and added the VC color vibrance effect for colorization. Another effect I could have used is Colorama, which is a very powerful colorizing tool, but I did prefer the minimalistic one color look. Then I added a hue saturation effect to boost the saturation a bit, three glow effects for a really smooth glow, a curves effect for additional contrast control, and a CC vignette effect with a pin highlight set to 100, so the vignette wouldn't darken bright pixels. Additionally, I wanted to add some chromatic aberration, so I brought this entire comp into the final comp, created three copies of it, used the shift channels effect to set each copy to their corresponding red, green, and blue channels, blended them all together with a screen blending mode, shifted their positions a bit to get this edge bleeding while also scaling them up just slightly so the edges wouldn't show, and even used the optics compensation effect on two of the channels to get some distortion around the edges. I added some film grain, black bars, the turbulent displace effect on an adjustment layer, together with the transform effect to glitch and stretch everything right at the end before it cuts to black. Usually for film grain or chromatic aberration, I would use third-party tools like Film Convert or Red Giant's Chromatic Aberration plugin for example, but seeing as this will be provided as a template, then I didn't want to include any paid third-party tools. The cherry on top was the motion blur, which I turned on for the title and greeble layers, but I did lower down the shutter angle of the comp to 90, so there wasn't as much blur in order to retain the details. Remember, because we pre-composed the title, we can now go back, edit the text, and it automatically updates across the entire project. We could also swap the Greeble texture with a different one and get a completely new look. It's all about experimentation. The whole point of these tutorials slash breakdowns slash templates, whatever you wanna call them, is not just to use them as they are, but to try and benefit from this creation process so you can better understand how to combine techniques to achieve different kinds of results or at least try to use them to help execute your own ideas. Change the color, find a different font, try out a new camera angle. The possibilities are endless. To infinity and beyond! All right, guys, we've finally reached the end of infinity. So if you're still around, then thanks for watching and being patient all the way through. Hopefully this was useful or entertaining in some way. And if you happen to have any questions, then feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you guys out. Also remember to download the project files on my Gumroad page, which again are using the pay what you want system so you can grab anything you want for free while still having the option to support the channel if you'd like to. If you don't wanna miss out on upcoming videos, then make sure to hit subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace out.